Howdy. I'm Gray Pilgrim. Well, yesterday I did a video about my trap doors. And I thought I'd go back a little ways from them. What existed before the trap door. And this is an 1863 Springfield. This is the very kind of rifle, actually, this very rifle was used in the Civil War. This was a Civil War vintage uh, rifle. It, it says 1863 on the side here, and every marking and everything on it is correct. You'll notice it doesn't have a rear sight. It's been drifted out. Well, to me, that's an indicative of where this came from. The fellow I got it from, while well, he was dead, I went to an estate sale, and uh, the friend of the family who was auctioning this stuff off uh, mentioned that uh, he'd come up, uh, I think from Louisiana, and that this was an old family heirloom. Well, that says something to me, because this is an 1863 Springfield. It came from the Springfield Arsenal up north, but it has the sight drifted out. Now, why would that be? Because this was a battlefield pickup by some um, uh, rebel kid from Louisiana, and he wanted to, to use it in, for himself. Well, in the South, it was a common practice to get rid of these damn rear sights and just sight along the barrel. So I'm wondering if that's what this is. I don't have any proof. Could have been taken out sometime, say, in the 19-teens or the 1940s, but I don't know. <clears throat> but I think it was a Civil War find, given the, the provenance of where it came from, and that this is actually a rebel-used Springfield. I have no idea what troop had it before that. But this is 1863, so it's in the, in the heat of battle. Well, this, this isn't real. This is a, a, an Italian copy, but it's authentic in every respect. This is an 1853 Enfield. This is a British-made weapon. Well, the original was. This is Italian-made. And uh, this is the kind of thing you'll see down at a, at a rendezvous or among reenactors. And a lot of these came in from uh, the UK by way of the, uh, the blockade runners in the south coming into the various ports or actually into a fishing boat and then uh, being rowed into a small bayou or something along the coast there. And by that method trickled into the uh, coffers of the Confederacy. And in the early days of the war, a lot of these ended up in the hands of the Union as well. Uh, it's about the same as in 1863 in terms of, I think it uses the same bullet. So uh, either 50 or 55, I forget which. But uh, this is a, a good quality rifle and shoots well, but uh, it's just an interesting take on the concept. You know, we, you know, they're about oh, they're about the same length, have about the same uh, uh, loading rod, and uh, well, this one has a slot in it for uh, for a cleaning jag. I don't think that one does. No, that one does not. Uh, but it's a good little rifle. I, I picked this one up from a a local uh, uh, rendezvous slash reenactor who's got, getting up there in the years and is sort of uh, reducing his uh, rifle count. I'm getting up there in years too, but I have a few more to enjoy such things. I don't take things out like this to, to the, the rendezvous. I, I used to go to them, but that was when I lived in Albuquerque many years ago. Knew some fine people from there. There's nothing finer than sitting around the campfire sipping on a cup of coffee in a tin mug, was sitting on a log, and hearing some fellow throw a, a stick into the fire and tell a tale of, oh, the Bozeman Trail, or uh, uh, just something, you know. These fellows really knew their stuff, and it was a fun time. And then you'd go over and, and, and the next day and watch the, them toss axes or, or uh, shoot flintlocks or cap locks <coughs> in uh, target practice, all sorts of things. You know, good good family fun, good times. You know, uh, There have been rendezvous all over the country. Uh, there's a guy named Ethan at uh, I Love Muzzle Loading who's uh, attended a few with his family and uh, 
did some videos on it, and, and it just looks like such a, a homey family thing to do, you know, take him out. And here's his, here's his lady out there with a, a big cauldron making a big pot of stew for everybody, and, and his kid running around, you know, in their uh, barefoot and just having a wonderful time. And, and he's standing there in his uh, buckskins and just looking like like uh, like the mountain man he really is in, at heart. You know, it's just a it's a good thing to do. You know, I'm getting up there, but dang, I remember those days, and they're just they're just downright fun. Anyway, these two rifles made me think of that. You know, the the good the the hard times and the good times. You know, I have no idea how many this one killed. Do you realize, by the way, that the Civil War, in the Civil War, there were more American casualties than any other war in American history? Matter of fact, probably than more than were killed in uh, a lot of them combined. The reason is, is that in the Civil War, you count both sides, because casualties on both sides count, because they're all Americans. And by the way, uh, that's a, a sore point, but... In the 1930s, I think it is, that the Congress took up a, 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 a bill that basically made all Civil War veterans, regardless of size, sides, American veterans. They were administered, administered as veterans. And uh, I think the last Civil War veteran's widow received her last pension in the 1940s. And she was a Confederate, by the way. Matter of fact, they built a huge monument in uh, uh, in the uh, Richmond, Virginia. Uh, I mean, not Richmond. The um, where is it? It's uh, Robert E. Lee place. Whatever the the in the cemetery there, uh, and it's this big big uh, uh, commemorative that basically says to all all those of the South who fell to honor their uh, the pledge to their states, or something like that. And it was considered a symbol of the reunification of America. You know, what really unified America, this is, this is a little known, but what really unified America was the Spanish-American War. Because when, the, when we declared war on Spain, we sent an army of uh, mixed troops, a bunch of pony soldiers from the West, a bunch of northern boys, and a whole bunch of southern boys. And one of the generals leading them was a southern general from the Civil War. And uh, I think he came down with yellow fever, and he had he was delirious through half of it. But by gum, we had a southern general leading that war. And that was very important to McKinley because it so showed the solidification of the country, the nation, as a whole union instead of combating pieces. But uh, people don't remember these things. By the way, see that rifle up above the door over there? That's a... Tra that's a uh, uh, 3040 Craig Jorgensen from the Spanish-American War. I know because my great-grandfather carried that, that very rifle. It kind of uh, followed him home when he came home. I have some uh, family tales about that. It's complete. It's never been uh, sporterized like most of them. Uh, but uh, that's just a... He never went over to uh, Cuba. Uh, I think he was on his way over to the Philippines when uh, things settled down. But... Uh, that's another story. I had another uncle who, uh, a great uncle, you know, I guess a great grand uncle, it was my great grandfather's brother who fought in World War I. It was his young baby brother. And Uncle Ben was a, a doughboy. And I've got his uh, boot camp uh, uh, scorebook for, uh, for riflery. And because of that, I built a 1917 Enfield like he would have carried. I don't have his gun, but. Uh, I do have a, a bayonet that I got from my granddad that may have been his. I don't know. I really don't know. It's over there somewhere. Uh, but uh, you know, it was in a Civil War vintage uh, scabbard for a saber. Got the scabbard too, but uh, I, don't, I used to have the, just leave the uh, the bayonet in it. But I'd, I'd like to find a rifle. I mean, a, a you know, a sword that would actually fit it. I'm just rambling now, you know. Just looking at a 1863 Springfield and an 1853 Enfield. Good rifles. And 
just sort of American heritage, you know? Happy trails.